So now that we have Unity installed, let's go ahead and actually start looking at how we're going to create our first project. But before we do that, let's quickly take a look at the options on this screen. Now yours probably doesn't have anything here. You might have the standard assets project, but as you go ahead and create projects in Unity, you get a listing here. The more you have, the more you can scroll down through. And of course you can remove these simply by either removing the folder on your system or going ahead and just deleting it. So if you have the getting started panel or tab, whatever you want to call it, uh, usually there's a video there. There we go. It just took a while for mine to load for some reason. Come on. Well, anyway, there's a video there you can watch. Uh, go ahead, watch it on your own time. It's just uh, getting to know Unity. Uh, next, I'm going to come over to the My Account drop down. If we go ahead and click this, you'll see that you can sign in or out. You can go to your Manage Your Account on the Unity website, as well as set up organizations and get some help. Open project. Uh, occasionally during class, I'm going to go ahead and give you a project to work on where you have to either solve some problem in the game or add some sort of feature. We'll cover it more in depth when we get there, but essentially you just click the O button, navigate to the folder and open up the project. But we're going to create a new one. So let's go ahead and we'll click this. This is just going to be our very first project. So we'll start off by setting the name. So I'm just going to say day one. You know what? We're actually going to make something out of this. Let's go ahead and actually keep this one. Let's call this, uh, I don't know, Island <laughs> FPS. There we go. And let's go over a couple of these other options. We have location. This is where we want to save it to. And if we click these little ellipses here, you can pick where you want to go. Now I have a Git folder that I save all of mine into. Um, for now, just go ahead and save it to the desktop. We can get more into Git later on in the course. So I'm going to say choose for now. Uh, organization is tied to Uni Unity Analytics. So let's just skip that just for a second. We'll come over here. We have the option to have our game be set up for 3D or 2D. Um, we're, this is going to be a 3D option. It doesn't really matter if you miss this at the beginning, as you can change this in game pretty easily. Now add asset packages. We'll cover these a little bit more in detail again later on when we cover asset packages, but think of it as just a bunch of pre-built stuff that you can go ahead and put in. And right here, enable Unity Analytics. Um, we'll go ahead, we'll leave this on for this game here. And of course you can set up the organization if you don't have one already. So let's go ahead, we'll click Create Project. Unity is gonna go off, go ahead and create the project for us based on the settings we've picked. And it'll open up. Now, when you first start Unity, you're not going to have this one. So let's go ahead and we'll close this. It did open up to the tab for services automatically because of analytics. But normally the services tab is not opened. So I'm just going to come over to the inspector. And you're actually going to have a layout similar to this here, the default. I personally just do not like this because I find it wastes just a lot of room as you create stuff. You get these icons for creating them and it's just a lot of wasted room for me. And another thing is I like to see my game view and my scene view separately instead of having to click between them. Now a lot of this is going to come down to personal preference, but for me, I have a three monitor setup and I like to put my game view out on the one monitor. I have on my right monitor, all my documentations, maybe I have the Unity API documentation open or, or whatever I need that's open there. And the, the center monitor, the one that I sit in front of, I have the Unity Editor open as well as Mono Develop or whatever it is I'm using. But as far as the layout goes here for one screen, I like to change it to the two by three. And then I take the project window, drag it down to the bo bottom. You can drag it anywhere you want. You can even have it float around. So you can actually go drag this off to another window. And if you notice when you're dragging them around, they snap. When you get close to an edge, this whole UI is completely customizable. You can set it up any way you want. There's more windows than this, which we can access through the window window menu. But I'm just going to stick with the default ones for now. And if you grab the edges, you can drag them over. And just like so, this is a good start. So let's go over some of these windows and what they do. So the scene view is the window where you're actually going to be moving around and creating your game world in. And the game view, sometimes I call these windows or panels, uh, but the game view is the camera in your scene. We can see it right here. 
This is what the player sees while they're playing your game. So as you move stuff around in here, you can actually see how it affects what the, what the player sees. I'm gonna jump over to the hierarchy view. Now in Unity 5.4, we've got access to the actual scenes now. Uh, I'm gonna leave that a little bit till later on. What I wanna look at is the things under it. These are called game objects, and there's all sorts of different game objects that we're gonna get into. Uh, we'll do that in the next video. For now, just keep in mind that the hierarchy is just a list of all of these things that are in your scene. And these things are called game objects. Now the project panel down here, this contains all of the assets that you can use in your game. So as you go ahead and you start creating 3D models and you import them into Unity, they'll be here, all the fonts that you bring in, they'll be here, all the textures, everything that you bring into your project that's available to your game is gonna be listed in here. Next up, we have the inspector, and the inspector is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. You click a game object or one of your assets, and you get to inspect its properties that are publicly available. And in doing so, you can also see the components that it's made out of, its title, whether it's static, turned on. We'll cover the components in a bit, but those are the main windows that you see. When we start getting into scripting, i definitely going to want the console one hooked up. So if you see how I did that, I just came to window, just click console. You could also use the short key. And I'll go ahead and click it. And I'm going to put it right down here. Of course, you could put it wherever you want, depending on your screen layout. And we've already gone ahead and looked at the setup for the different window layouts. And we've seen the services and the accounts. We're going to cover layers in a bit, as well as the pivot and local versus global. So the only other thing I want to look at in this video are the transform tools. And these correspond to the keyboard keys Q, W, E, R, T. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we move around inside of our scene view. For a point of reference, I want a little bit more than the, the camera and the, the light. I'm going to go ahead, right click in the hierarchy. Go down to 3D object, click cube. And it's going to go ahead and add a cube for me. I like the inspector view. So if we hold the middle mouse button down, we can pan around our scene. If we hold Alt and the left mouse button, we can rotate. And we can also zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Those are the three basic movements you're gonna be using quite a bit inside of Unity. Now there are other ways to do these as well. For instance, if you go ahead and click the first little hand here on the transform tools, then you can hold the left mouse button and move around. And while we're looking at the transform tools, let's go ahead and, well, we'll go over these. So the grab tool simply just allows you to pan. And I think these used to have tool tips, didn't they? Well, they don't now. The next one is the movement tool, where if you select it and you select a game object, you get these axes showing up. And they correspond to our 3D axis over here. And you can move them along the axes, or you can grab the one in the center and move it freeform around. As a general rule, I don't ever do that. I like to be very precise with my movements. So I almost always just use the axes. The next one is the rotate tool, which of course just allows you to rotate it. The next one is the scale, and we can scale along an axis or all of them at once. And the last one's the rec transform, which we use for 2D stuff. And we don't have anything 2D on the screen right now, so that's pretty much it for this video. We've learned how to move around, we've got our project started, and we learned how to add a cube.